Now, an emeritus news brief. I'm Lynn Houston. The stock markets were up today on some positive news from three banks and, believe it or not, from General Motors. Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase, and Citigroup all reporting they were profitable the first two months of this year and expect to be profitable for all of 2009. Then GM surprised analysts by saying they might not need the $2 billion they asked for from federal TARP funds this month after all. And investors got some satisfaction after seeing Bernie Madoff carried off to jail after a federal judge accepted his guilty plea to 11 charges related to the $50 billion Ponzi scheme. Sentencing was set for June 16th, but those swindled by Madoff are still upset that the IRS has not decided yet how it will handle taxes that investors paid based on Madoff's fraudulent statements of what their accounts earned. The investors want refunds. Also yet to be resolved, just how much of the $50 billion might still be recoverable by government prosecutors, including at least $60 million that the Madoff family reportedly took from accounts as the scandal unfolded. New claims for unemployment up again and the number of Americans continuing on benefits reached a new record. For the week ending March 7th, 654,000 jobless workers filed their initial unemployment claims. There are now 5.3 million Americans on continuing unemployment benefits, meaning those who have lost their jobs over the last three months are having a tougher time finding employment. And the Business Roundtable, a group of top-level corporate executives, has released a study showing that the American health care and insurance system pays the most for the worst outcomes among advanced nations. The group says the problem puts American companies at a cost disadvantage when competing against companies from countries with universal health plans. President Obama spoke to the group during their meeting in Washington today, answering questions from the audience. Obama did not rule out a government-run health plan to compete with the private sector. We can't simply just add on a whole bunch of people to a broken system, because that's also unsustainable. I mean, you can't just take people who are currently uninsured, plop them onto a system that is generating those kinds of costs, not dig into the engine and, and try to figure out how to make the thing run more efficiently, because then you'll just be broke that much faster. And at some point you start making very draconian decisions about uh, people losing benefits. The latest on the biggest issues and public policy at emeritusnews.com. That's an Emeritus News Brief. I'm Lynn Houston.